In today's video, we'll be going over a major game studio in From Software, possibly working on two unannounced PlayStation 4 titles. Could one of those be Bloodborne 2? I'll speculate on what those games might be and how their plan is in terms of their upcoming game releases. Also, remember back at Square Enix's E3? Alright, that conference wasn't all too great, but they did announce a new game by Platinum Games titled Babylon's Fall. We got a cinematic trailer for that and we haven't heard much more about it, but it looks like we're going to be getting some more info in 2019. I want to talk a little bit about that game and why I'm excited for that game even though we haven't seen much. Also, while we know that Days Gone is a single player experience, it actually had multiplayer pitch to Sony, but Sony were the ones to say no to it. Neo 2 looks to be getting some information in early 2019. The in-game advertisements for Street Fighter 5 have been removed for the time being. I am happy about that because that is something ridiculous that Capcom added to Street Fighter and Mosh Runner World is getting some new Assassin's Creed gear. More on that at the end of this video. First off, from software looks to have two unannounced titles in development. Specifically, Hidetaka Miyazaki talked to 4Gamer.net in an interview, and discussing what the studio is working on, Miyazaki said that there are three and a half product lines, and he mentioned that in a 2016 interview. And that 3.5 product line, why it's 3.5, is Dresene is considered as 0.5, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is considered as 1, so we know that game is coming soon, and then two of that is made up by unannounced titles. Specifically, that means they have two games in the works. Now, whether or not those are PlayStation 4 games or next generation titles, that remains to be seen, but I do have some speculation as what that could be, and keep in mind that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, while that game was a relatively recent announcement going back to E3, that game is about to come out. Work on that game is wrapping up, so the majority of From Software is moving on from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and they are working on these unannounced projects. What could these unannounced projects be? Well, I think it's about time we see a return for Armored Core. There's been a lot of tease that we would see another Armored Core title at some point, Point. If you guys don't know, that was From Software's Mecha franchise, and we haven't seen a new game in a very long time. I believe the last one we saw was Armored Core Verdict Day. That was back on the PlayStation 3, so a legitimate new entry to Armored Core would be very good. And I still do believe that at some point we will be seeing a Bloodborne 2. I think that's a foregone conclusion. I know that Sony signed a two exclusive game agreement with From Software. I think Dressing A wasn't a part of that. I think Dressing A was just a game that From Software wanted to do because they wanted to do something different. Hidetaka Miyazaki always said that they got a little burned out by Souls and constantly going back to the well with that. Dresene offered them a chance to do something completely different with PlayStation VR. I'm sure Sony and them worked out an agreement, but I still do believe Bloodborne 2 is in the works and I think Sony would be foolish not to come to an agreement to make that game happen because Bloodborne, I've always said that was the first true system seller on the PlayStation 4 and that game did incredibly well from a commercial standpoint and it sold a lot of people on the PS4, so why not do a Bloodborne 2? Hey, a Bloodborne 2? Could that be the first system seller on the PlayStation 5? That's a scenario I can very well see happen, but that's what I'm thinking. As far as those two unannounced titles, I could see a new Armored Core game and I could see a Bloodborne 2. Although, it could be very well that one of those two games is a brand new IP, but considering they're bringing you new IPs with Dressene and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, I think it would also pay dividends for From Software to go back to the well and dig up some of the franchise and IPs that they've already created. It's not like you're even going that far back into the well to create a new Bloodborne game. The hype surrounding that is still very much there. When we hear more about what From Software is working on, we'll be sure to let you guys know. Moving on from that, back at E3, Square Enix's press conference specifically, Platinum Games announced a brand new title in Babylon's Fall. The producer of the game, Yosuke Saito, talked about Babylon's Fall and why we haven't heard more about it, but he also added that he'll be able to share an update on the game sometime in 2019, and he also added that he has multiple unannounced games in the works, and those will be announced at some point, and they're continuing to work hard at them. 2019 is going to be a major year for Square Enix for a variety of different reasons. I think 2018 was a bad year for Square Enix. We had games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider not do all too well. Final Fantasy 15 have a large majority of its DLC cancelled, but 2019 is a chance for them to come back strong. We have Kingdom Hearts 3. We have Left Alive. What will come of games like Babylon's Fall? There's a lot of excitement surrounding Square Enix, but right now, financially, they're not doing all too hot, but there's a chance for 2019 to be a big comeback year for them. We'll see how Kingdom Hearts 3 turns out. We'll see how Left Alive turns out. We'll see how games like Babylon's fall shape up. But I think going into 2019, that is a story every gamer needs to be aware of. I think it's been swept under the rug a little bit, but Square Enix is really at a make it or break it point in 2019. Could you imagine if Kingdom Hearts 3 coming off the release of FF15 was also a disaster? That would be horrible for Square Enix. And then if new IPs like Left Alive and Babylon's fall don't turn out well, well, of course that goes without saying that would be a disaster as well. Something to definitely keep an eye on in 2019. Moving on from 
from that, while we know Sony has been big on single player experience development and one of those games, a big part of that is Days Gone, multiplayer was actually something considered with Days Gone. But speaking with GamesBeat, the CEO of World War Z, Matthew Karch spoke on the idea of doing a Days Gone multiplayer component and here's what he said. Quote, at some point I went to Sony and said, I've seen what you're doing with Days Gone, look what we're doing with World War Z, maybe we can help you with a multiplayer component. We were already under development when we heard about it, of course we took a deep sigh when you know Sony is going to be putting major marketing dollars behind a title that's highlighting the swarms the way we were. It took a little wind out of our sails, but since they focused less on those swarms elements more and more, I think on the story aspect of their game. So this wasn't a pitch directly from Sony Ben, rather the World War Z guys came over and said, hey, we could do a multiplayer component from Days Days Gone, but Sony put the kibosh on that. It looks like they want Days Gone to be strictly a single player experience. And hey, it is shaping up pretty nicely, and we'll see how that game turns out in April of next year. Moving on from that, another game we haven't heard too much about since its announcement is Neo 2. But the director of the game, Fumihiko Yasuda, spoke to the Japanese website 4Gamer on the game. Specifically, he just said he's working diligently on Neo 2 and he'll be able to provide an update in early 2019. Of course, Neo was a very well received game back in early 2017. I think when we got the announcement of Neo 2 so quickly after the release of the original Neo, I think some of us were a little off put by it, but at the same time, if they can build upon the successes of the first game, I do believe it can turn out pretty well. Expect to hear more about Neo 2 sometime in early 2019. Moving on from that, one of the crazy things that happened recently, and not a lot of gamers really brought attention to it, was the fact that Capcom was adding Street Fighter V in-game advertisements. That was absolutely ridiculous, and yes, while you could turn them off, they also hampered your experience, and they added incentives for keeping in-game advertisements on, like more of the in-game currency. There were some people talking out about it, and it looks like Capcom put the kibosh on it pretty quickly, as Street Fighter V in-game advertisements have been removed for the time being. Now, they were a part of the Capcom Cup that was running. Producer of the game Yoshinoro Ono made a statement on the appearance of the in-game ad and he said he was taking fan feedback and they could be altered the next time they appear. I do not want in-game ads thrown in my face because this can just open the floodgates for even more crazy things to happen. Could you imagine in-game ads being thrown into a single player experience? Yes, it starts at a microscopic view with fighting games and it's not super super intrusive but then it gets worse and worse and worse. That's what really happened with DLC. It started with the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion's Force Armor, and now it is what we have today in 2018 going into 2019. I do not want in-game advertisements, sponsored content, and shooting my single-player experiences. I know games have had paid product placement before, but that's not super intrusive. In the case of Street Fighter V, it was getting to that point, and if we continue to let it slide, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse, so that's a no to me. And lastly, I want to give a shout out that Mach Hunter World has gotten a sneaky update adding some new Assassin's Creed gear. Specifically, there's a unique Assassin's Hood that'll make you look a little bit like Ezio, and there's a new quest line called SDF Silent Deadly Fierce. It's in a special area and you'll find some big baddies. If you manage to take them all down, you get some feathers and the feathers unlock your new gear, both the Bayek Laird armor and the specialized tool Assassin's Hood. You'll need two feathers to craft both of them, so a pretty cool addition to Monster Hunter World. A lot of crossovers coming with World. We saw a crossover with FF14, we know The Witcher 3 is coming, and now Assassin's Creed Monster Hunter World is making some major moves, and this is one game that Capcom has definitely nailed. And that's gonna conclude this video, guys. What do you think about From Software having two unannounced games in development? Are you on board with me thinking it's a new Armored Core and a Bloodborne 2? Or do you think it might be something different? Maybe a new IP? Maybe something entirely different? Let us know your thoughts on that. Babylon's Fall, the new game by Platinum Games, will be having more information revealed in 2019. Days Gone had some sort of multiplayer component pitched by the World War Z guys, but that was turned down. Neo 2 is getting more information in early 2019. Street Fighter 5 in-game advertisements have been removed for the time being, and Monster Hunter World gets some Assassin's Creed gear. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.